Greetings, adventurer. Have you completed your leveling journey only to find the endgame content a bit confusing? Well, my name is Sneptix, and I'm here to change that. Today, I'll be guiding you into an easy breezy time in Ascension World of Warcraft. That way, you can become a strong badass just like me. Alright, maybe not exactly like me, but I'm gonna get you in the right direction. I'm going to cover most of the in-game content, including raids, dungeons, mythic plus, mana storm, battlegrounds, arena, and high risk PvP. I'm also going to split this video into multiple sections so you guys can skip back and forth if you're looking for specific info on a piece of endgame content. With that being said, let's get right into it. First things first, you want to make sure that you've reached max level because trying to do endgame content while not at max level is almost like trying to make your parents proud. It's never gonna happen. You will always need to be max level to do endgame content. However, the maximum level cap might change depending on the server and current expansion. For the purposes of this video, I will exclusively be talking about the active seasonal server, Elune Season 9. Currently, as of making this, the level cap is 60 and the Burning Crusade expansion has yet to be released. Raiding is probably one of the most iconic things about World of Warcraft. And therefore, it's only natural that raiding should be a part of Project Ascension 2, with its own twist of course. With difficulties ranging from normal to ascended trials, there's plenty of adventure to be had for people of every skill level. The raiding experience consists of gathering a somewhat large team of players to tackle the dangers of a plethora of large boss monsters. To enter a raid instance, you will have to travel to the physical open world instance location. These instances are scattered around the open world. If you don't know the location of a given raid, you can either google it or wait for a summon just like my own lazy self. The recommended number of players is 10 to 25. But don't worry too much about finding the perfect number of people, as raid content scales directly with the amount of players that choose to participate. Which means the difficulty will always stay relevant to the amount of participants in the group. If you don't have many friends, like me, There's always the option to use the ascension chat to find other people trying to gather a raid group. To join the in-game ascension chat, simply type slash join space ascension. Alternatively, you can find a nice guild to join and simply ask them if you can raid alongside them. The best place to find a guild would be in the ascension community discord. Link will be in the description. Despite what you would think, the built-in group finder for ascension is rarely used to find raid groups. Besides gathering a recommended amount of 10 players, there's no gear requirement to get into raiding content, so buckle up as I tell you about the different difficulties that one can experience. On normal difficulty, one can expect to find the most basic of mechanics. It's generally speaking, the entry point for many new players. On heroic difficulty, the damage is turned up a bit to provide more of a challenge for players who have outgrown normal difficulty. Starting on Mythic difficulty is where you will start to experience some of the custom ascension mechanics that the development team has implemented to provide more of a challenge. These mechanics are in addition to standard mechanics and are therefore a somewhat large increase in difficulty for newer players. Lastly, we have the Ascended difficulty, where just like on Heroic, the damage and health of monsters is increased even further, along with the custom mechanics of Mythic. For those aspiring to truly push their limits, Ascended Trials is their best bet. The difficulty can be adjusted with each level on a slider that's available to the raid group leader. To set the Ascended Trial difficulty, simply tell your group leader to open up the Trials tab, which can be found in their micro menu. The group leader will then be presented with a menu to increase the difficulty and begin the trial. For the trial to be completed, you must defeat all the raid bosses as a group. Each trial difficulty gives different cosmetic rewards. And with increased difficulty, comes increased rewards too. When killing bosses on normal, heroic, mythic, and ascended difficulty, one can obtain raiders' commendations, which can then be spent on sweet sweet loot at the raid vendor. Located in the Valley of Wisdom for Horde, or inside Stormwind Keep for the Alliance, raider commendations get awarded per boss kill, as opposed to a full raid completion, which means if you suddenly have to leave the PC due to forgetting that baked casserole in the oven, or maybe you forgot to pick up your mother-in-law at the station, then you can freely leave the raid and still expect rewards for your participation. Of course, Ascended Trials also have a currency called Triumphant Raider Tokens, but this currency works a bit differently. You have to complete the raid in its entirety, and rewards are not based on bosses killed, but rather on difficulty completed. Higher difficulty equals more tokens. 
These tokens are spent on exclusive cosmetics, which can be found on a vendor in the same rooms as previously mentioned. Now that you know the basics of raiding, I wish you a happy time killing bosses and taking names. On your journey to 60, chances are you've already crossed paths with the dungeon game mode. But just for good measure, I'm going to briefly go over the basics. Dungeon teams will always consist of 5 players total, 1 tank, 1 healer, and 3 DPS players, also referred to as a party. Alright, maybe not that kind of party. After reaching max level, you will have the option to queue up for other heroic dungeons. The only other requirement is to gather a total of 40 item levels. These dungeons aren't really that special either, kind of like my high school grades. For mythic dungeons, the item level requirement increases to 58, along with a new requirement to get 350 PvE power, but otherwise it's much the same. To briefly explain PvE power, it's a stat that happens to be on most of the endgame gear relating to PvE content. It increases your damage and decreases monster damage while doing PvE activities. This is also where you will get your first Mythic Plus keystone. It drops from the corpse of the last dungeon boss. And that leaves us at Mythic Plus. Once you have your keystone, it will be level 1. To find a group for Mythic Plus, you will once again be using the in-game ascension chat to look for others willing to complete a keystone. To start your first Mythic Dungeon, you will have to travel to the physical dungeon instance in the open world to begin your adventure. Once your entire team is inside, you should be able to right-click your keystone in your inventory to start the dungeon. Mythic Plus dungeons work a bit differently than other dungeons though. For a start, you will notice that a timer starts counting down. If you complete the dungeon within the time allotted, your keystone will upgrade into a higher difficulty. But beware the dangers of Mythic Plus, for with increased key level also comes Mythic Plus affixes. The higher the key level, the more affixes get applied. Each affix is designed to hinder your progress and to make the dungeon run even more deadly. Each Mythic Plus dungeon will reward loot at the end instead of throughout the dungeon like other difficulties. This loot starts at item level 65 on Mythic 1, and so far ends at 80 on Mythic 20. These keystone and item level ranges are subject to change as the season progresses and more content gets released. If you can't use the gear that you get, it's possible to scrap it at the Mythic Plus vendor in exchange for coins. These coins can then be used to buy gear of your own liking. Alternatively, you can also upgrade previous Mythic Plus pieces to a higher level with the max upgradable level corresponding with the highest key level that your account has achieved this season. And lastly, in case the difficulty becomes a little bit too much for you to clear, the vendor also has the ability to lower the key level for you. This vendor is located in the same room as the raid vendors, in the Valley of Wisdom for the Horde and inside the Stormwind Keep for the Alliance. Mana storms. Oh, mana storms. What can I say? If you cherish your mental health and free time, then this game mode is definitely not for you. And I guess I was technically lying when I said you needed to be max level for all endgame content. But while mana storms become available at level 10, you will want to be max level and fully geared to push mana storms. The hellish pit known as mana storms can be complicated enough to fill out its own video. But today I'm going to tell you about the basics. You can queue up for it solo or in groups of two, three, and more, each with their own personal best score attached. When you first start out, you'll be thrown into level one. And the objective is to kill a mini boss that spawns somewhere. Once that is completed, a portal will open up, sucking you into level 2. Then, you simply repeat this process until your brain gets cooked. This is also by far the best method of farming reroll scrolls, so if your mental is strong, this is the way to go for grinding out that new build. In all seriousness though, competing on the Mana Storm leaderboard takes a lot more than just patience and effort. Most successful Mana Storm builds are performing way differently than other PvE builds. To go far in this game mode, it is my recommendation that you create a build full of tankiness, utility, mobility, and self-sustain. As you reach higher and higher levels, the damage and health of monsters start piling up, and you need to especially be careful of the affixes. Once on higher levels, extra mechanics start appearing, such as, but not limited to, poisonous mushrooms, tornadoes, bone storms, and of course, stuns and silences galore. But of course, if you succeed in hitting the higher levels of mana storms, you will get plenty of rewards. Points called Bet 
Midland Bullion, which are used in exchange for exotic wares, purchasable from Milhouse Manastorm himself, who can be found near the coal board in your faction's main city. Rewards such as companions, cosmetics, mounts, and more, but probably the most useful ones being the tomes. Tomes that allow you to conjure food, pick locks, or even give yourself slow fall. So if you want that cute looking pet or that sweet looking mount, you better start sacrificing your mental health to the sadistic Milhouse. If bashing in other players' skulls and making montage videos is more your speed, then of course Ascension doesn't fail to deliver. While the PvP meta can be a bit wild and the game mode full of sweats, it is nonetheless where a decent amount of people go to to have fun. Just remember, a good transmog is at least 20% damage increase and pressing your buttons harder will always yield a higher crit number. For regular PvP gameplay, there isn't really much to note here. You just queue up and have fun. While for raided arenas, there is a requirement of 250 PvP power. Just like we briefly went over PvE power, I'll do the same for its counterpart. PvP power can be found on gear that mainly comes from doing PvP content. It increases the damage you do to other players and increases healing done while doing PvP content. It also increases damage done to monsters if you decide to enable high risk. When doing instance PvP such as Battlegrounds and Arena, you can obtain Honor and Arena Points. Despite the name, Arena Points can also be gathered from other sources such as Culprit Quests and Battlegrounds, but I digress. These currencies can then be used at, yep, you guessed it, another vendor. This time located in a designated PvP area, inside a hut in Valley of Spirits for the Horde, and inside a building in the Old Town District for the Alliance. If you're having trouble finding the locations of a vendor, it's always a good idea to ask a guard for directions. These vendors will sell you the latest hot fashion in PvP gear. The item level of the gear changes as new PvP progressions get released throughout Ascension Season 9. Lastly, we have High Risk PvP. High Risk PvP can be enabled for many reasons, with the two most popular being spicing up the open world with PvP and gold making. There's a lot of information to know about High Risk, but that warrants its own video. So instead, I will go over the basics of what you need to know. To enable high risk, you need to be inside your capital city. You can then open up your PvP menu on default hotkey H and click on PvP rule set. Here you can change the PvP rule set that applies to you. No risk PvE means you can't be targeted or enter PvP combat with other players. No risk PvP means you can be targeted by other players and enter PvP, but you won't lose anything. And lastly, high risk PvP also enables PvP, but you can now fight for your own and other players gear. Meaning if you get killed, you can lose your equipped pieces of gear and when you kill someone, you can take their pieces of gear. There's also a chance to lose items from your bag, but that all depends on what zone you're in. With high risk enabled, different zones have different tiers of PvP. PvP. To find out what PvP tier a zone is, check your map with high risk PvP enabled. With higher tiers comes more risk. There is a way to protect your gear from the hands of the greedy enemy though, and it's a service called Fell Commutation. For a set price of gold, you can protect your pieces of gear from getting dropped, but be careful as it quickly becomes quite expensive. To find the Fell Commutation, the easiest way is to ask a guard for directions. That's pretty much all you need to get started doing endgame content in Ascension World of Warcraft. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, or alternatively, you can ask the Ascension community for guidance. If all else fails, you can always open a ticket and state your issue. The game masters are usually highly professional and helpful. That's it for now. I love you all and I will see you in the next video.